Greetings everyone, welcome to the crash course of my channel. It's Dev Striker. This is one of my first crash course series of this channel, uh, which is Clash of Clans Band Board Crash Course. Um, I hope you enjoy throughout the course and um, let's begin. So the course is basically broken down into four parts. So there will be part one, part two, part three, and part four. So now we're looking into the slides of the part one, what the contents that I'm going to cover here. So there's gonna be course OV, so which is I'm just about to give you. Then we're gonna do look into the course requirements. And then we're going to look into the tool setup installations and then we're going to have a quick demo. So on part two, we're going to configure the API such as register for the Clash of Clan API and the band API. Then set up our project folders and configure our IDE, which is PyCharm and then set up the code repository using GitHub. So basically just to keep the chain of the code and for the educational purposes overall, hence I'm using, these are the small tools, but I'm going to touch them at a very, very basic level so that everyone feels welcome. On the part three, we're going to cover get and post API calls using Postman. So we're going to make some testing on the API and to see that we are able to communicate and send some requests and get some requests from the from our local machines. And uh, then we're going to actually start coding where we will implement our first um, ever command on writing Python script, where we'll do clan information command, play information command, world log information command, and help command. And um, it's okay if you are not familiar with the concept and the technology overall, because this is, I kind of got together a series where I, want to influence those are friends out there who wanted to learn such technology but didn't get um, any motivation or sort of to learn or haven't thought about it on the other end where people know lots or somewhat know but they are unsure how to get into this or maybe they want to improve in such cases they can it'll be beneficial for both sides so it's kind of like experiment for me and at the end we're gonna deploy our board and now when it comes to deployment we can actually deploy it better on the cloud um, but here i assume that not everybody can have the privilege to use the cloud so i picked a little uh, raspberry pi computer and uh, we will configure it um, so that if you really like want to see how everything puts together and kind of like replicate or simulate what will happen if you put this in the future uh, on the cloud uh, we we can actually go through those stuff yeah, and i think it's it, it's it's going to be um, a really good one to begin with um and uh, to be honest, and that will be the end uh, and discussions for overall series where we will look into the future, what could possibly be done and what part could be taken. So that's total overview of the course. Now, let me go back a little and uh, talk about the course requirements. So um, there are no really requirements as long as you have a, a good piece of computer that actually be able to install some software and uh, you have a good connection of internet, you should be good, to be honest. Um, but do I do understand that not everybody comes from the background of some sort of um, coding or programming or have 
been with like any sort of um, connection with the technology. So it is, it is quite um, noted here. And on the other hand, um, if you really like somebody who's advanced or intermediate level, it is it is not bad for you too because you also get to see how these authentications are made and how we are writing using best practices and whatnot. But don't get lost here and don't put too much expectation with this course because I am not going to cover it very deep down because I do not want to lose my audience at the end of it. If I put too much, I'm going to stretch the course and some people might find not find it very friendly because they might not use this technology in the past or they might not have used this technology in the past so hence i'm going to keep this at really basic level i will do cover bits and bobs where you put together to run a piece of a good piece of working production productionable code however it's going to be very limitations and I'm, I'm only going to touch on few functionality. And if you really want to build on it, there are tons of course on online. Also, in you can buy books if you prefer that method. You can you you should be able to get started, and this this should influence you or this should motivate you to learn. So now we're going to move to the tool setup. I'm going to switch to my Windows. So let us begin the installation for our project. Um, for that, we can open any available browser from the machine. And I'm going to use my default browser. And this is the first software tools that we will require for this project. And we will install it. So go ahead and type in Python. And we're going to go to the official page, go to downloads, and whatever the latest version of Python is available for your operating systems. So in this case, Windows. And I will post the download. So we are back and um, from here, we will try to open the installation. If in case it is not there, you can go to this hamburger menu and choose download to see all your files. Right, so now we are the heart of the installation of Python 3.9.1. Um, there's one thing very important to make sure that we select this add path 3.9 to add 3.9 to path basically or Python and both of them as is recommended for us. So we will make sure that we select both and do install now. Um, click yes. Once you have completed your installations, you will be given a window saying setup was successful and um, that should be good. So we'll go ahead and close out of this. Now, what we're going to do is open a command prompt and do some checks that our installation is there. And the second thing that we're also going to check is that Python package manager is available at the same time of our installations because we will need them in later um, when we're going to use some modules in our program and we will have to install them. So let's go ahead and start by searching for command prompt where we're actually going to check. So. And we'll go ahead and select the command prompt. 
bring it right here and we'll check if there is Python. So we did that. We'll say Python. version. Right, so it is saying that there's unknown version for the Python and it's given saying try Python help. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can see it has responded. So, and uh, we can see the correct format to check that is to do capital V. So let's go ahead and try that. And as you can see, it returns the version of the Python, which is 3.9.1. Right, the next part, it will be to check if we have Python package manager installed. So we will do again, pip dash v. Okay, so we can see Python package manager is 20.2.3 is installed right at this directory. Right, so now we have the first software that is required for the project and, um, and to complete the course for yourself. So now we're going to install a couple of packages that we will require for the completion of the course. So at the moment, what I'm going to type, just follow along if you are somebody kind of really beginners, and, or even if you know, that's really good. But if you're a beginner and you're unsure, just follow along. And um, at time to time, I will try to break things down in a general perspective and uh, we will try to pick it up from there. So first thing first, to install a package, we were going to call our pip, then install, and the package name. So the first package we're going to install is a request, which will be handy for us to request from the Clash of Clan API, and uh, the, uh, to connect with the Bend API that is provided. So let's go ahead and install that. And uh, push enter, and that should install. Okay, perfect. Now, the next one we're going to install is another package, it's a very lovely package. So, we're gonna do the same pip install Python. Oops, can spell that. Python dash and e and v. So it's the environmental file. So we're gonna have a Python and it's gonna be environmental setup. And within the environment, whatever the the cap the security keys that we're going to capture we're going to capture it within the environment rather than just directly copying and pasting it to a text file and any other file format, which is not really a best practice here. So we'll go ahead and install that. Perfect. And uh, I, I will dig more into this deeper well, when we continue further down the line. And the uh, next one we're going to install, it's a very lovely one, which is emoji, because we, why not? We're going to use some emojis to our program and send some, you know, make it interest, not just the text. So to do that, PIP, install emoji. And that should do it. Perfect. So 
that's so far for the Python installation as, as being the first piece of tools and the software that we will require. So let's let it see out from today next installation. Let's open up the browser and we're going to search for our IDE that we're going to use to write our code, which is PyCharm Integrated Development. So let's go ahead and search for PyCharm. And um, let's go ahead and select the option Download PyCharm. We are going to try to download the community edition, which is a free version. So let's go ahead and download that. And let us pose for the downloads. So we have completed the download and it should be available at the bottom of the screen of our browser. Let's go ahead and open the file. I'll minimize the screen from here. So yes. And again, we'll go through a basic installation. Next. Um, it is also best here to put all this just in case we don't want to be short on anything later in the project. So just for the safety here, I'll pick all of them. And let's go ahead and install. And let's pose installation to complete. Yeah. Now, what we'll do is go to our next piece of software to install. For that, I'll open the browser. Let's close the previous tab and search for Postman. So you should see the Postman link right here. We'll go ahead and select that. And uh, let's go ahead and try to find the downloads. So right on the bottom. And um, should automatically pick up the Postman download. So let's go ahead and download the app. Um, so please choose which one is applicable to you. For majority of the machines that are recently bought, they're 64 bits. And if you have, tend to have um, a machine that is old, then you can pick the 32 bits. So we'll go ahead and pick the 64 bit and uh, we'll pause. Once you have completed the installation, let's go ahead and open the installation file. Or we'll unmask the screen. So the postman is generally we will be needing for to test our API. So we need some sort of testing environment before writing a piece of code to ensure that we are sending the right um, request to the right target. So our which is our APIs, um, you know links and URLs where we're going to send a request and authentications sort of stuff. So I'm going to skip the sign in for now. If you want to go ahead, it's good. You can sign in and you can save your stuff. So but for this, I'm just going to skip right at the bottom. 
And um, this, this is going to make our life much easier rather than keep on logging into various websites and to have to go through the authentications, um, which uh, make me, at the end goal of this is to make our workspace more automations. So automate our workspace. And um, we're gonna test our API and et cetera. So we'll dive that into the software later on. For now, we have ensured that we have successfully installed this our second piece of software, which is Postman. Let's go ahead and close it. Now to the next one. I will open the browser, new tab, and let's go ahead and search for Git. And then, as you can see, Git SCM, which is, stands for Source Code Management. Let's go ahead in there. And uh, again, we will try to download it for Windows. And I'll post this once it downloads completely, then we can unpose it. So now I have finished downloading. So I'll go ahead and open the installation file. Yes. Minimize the screen. Um, from this point, you can follow me as I'm, I'm just going to go through the basic installation. Like I said, I'm not going to dive into any deeper into these tools because that will require me to create a course that are much independent themselves. So just basic. Let's go ahead. Next. Next. Um, you can select whatever the browser, um, the text editor that you would like as a default. I'll keep that as a theme. I, we're not really worried about it. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Let's go ahead. Perfect. Next. Next. Install. So you, if you are really into this, then you can do a little research for yourself. And um, you can install and do some configuration that you preferred. For me, it's just a basic touching on these tools. Uh, we we're going to use that a way is that it's more going to be IDE. It's going to take care of this. So I'm going to try to avoid as much as technical use of any, any of the stuff that we just installed and just go through like a go-to um, tools. So we have finished the installation and I hope it was useful. Um, if not, no, leave, leave a comment down below and let me know if you're going through an installation. I'll try to comment back and help as much as possible. So PyCharm is running at the background, which is saying the body is online. So all the scripts are running whatsoever. So let me go to Google Chrome. Um, I have, I'm using the band version of the online. So I've logged into my online account and they're ready to do some testing. So I've created a, a new um, band group or whatever you want to call it. And then let's get in there. I have done, done some testing before, but um, this is what you can, something you can like um, predict. Like, yeah, this is going to be similar work you'll be doing. Maybe slightly, you want it to be, maybe not a look alike. This is something that we built long ago, but um, it, it, at the end that we kind of like um, came to a conclusion that this is not something could be done, but because of a lot of fans out there who use this application band and they want to see how this could be done, or they're very interesting how it is done in, in a hobby level. So for them, it is, to be honest, there's nothing more than that. And so basically what you're going to happen is that 
you're gonna go on bench post and you're gonna post some sort of a command here and uh, what is going to happen is that that the our script that's, that is running is going to see that you have posted that command based on that is going to respond to it so let's go ahead and take a look at a, a player information so we'll say player then some um, tag So I'm just gonna grab a random tag to be honest here. So so that should yeah that should do really. And uh, let's post and see how the bot responds here. Um, just bear in mind that um, the web version is not hot reload. I'm not sure why um, takes time to reload sort of stuff. So you actually have to um, refresh quite a lot, but that doesn't happen in the actual app, what I noticed. Um, let's take a look at our um, script. It's still running. There is no issue on that. Um, let's see. Right, we have got some response from the bot. Um, says fetching data. Um, this depends on the network load and whatnot, and I'm left running from the local network. Um, there will be some delay whatsoever, but you should not expect uh, this amount of delay from your server or wherever you're sitting if you have a better internet connections to keep in mind as well as. Um, Again, just to see basic names and um, tag, town hall level, builder hall information. So all this information will be fetched from the Clash of Clans API. And then through the Band API, we'll be doing post and uh, we'll be posting and getting information back to check and back and forth. Um, there's another one we're going to do. It's, um, I believe, it's a while log. So let's. Do our one look for a random clan, um, just for the sake of um, demo here. So let's do and let's do a post. Hopefully, we get the response back a bit quicker than before. And I'm just gonna refresh. Um, not too sure why it takes too long for a web browser to refresh. I'm pretty sure if you look at the application by now, the app in your phone, whether it's Android or iPhone, it should have been loaded. But not sure about the web page. So we'll give it a little time. Although I've given some delays in order to cope because you want, you need to understand that and be end of it. It's not something what we have in our mind uh, to build a bot. It, it, it is just an API to post something if you wanted to get information of something if you wanted. It was just for general purposes to speak with. And what we have, um, what I have done here is turned into something that concurrently running at the background and checking all the information that is required. So now we can see it has responded with the fetching data over here. And as there's some information with the wire log with giving some win loss and ties. So there are like little nice emojis going on there, uh, which we will learn to. So at the end of the day, this is all about, I would say, uh, learning and educational purposes and, and to influence yourself to learn something, I believe. So that's it 
for this part and I'm hoping to see you on the next part. I know it was very less information to consume from here and I'm, I'm pretty sure on the next coming upcoming parts you'll be enjoying and holding through the route, route of learning here and um, you feel excited and um, to help a small content creator like me give it a likes and shares and leave your comments if you have any thoughts and if you want any improvements um it'll be really much appreciated to be honest and i'm hoping to see everyone very soon bye